Back to Switzerland on Australia's Business Channel. All eyes will be on inflation figures when they're released next week, with the RBA leaving the door open for a possible rate cut if figures come in softer than expected. Today we had more evidence that the pace of economic growth in Australia remains weak, with a leading index showing another month of growth below trend. But will a rate cut really give our ailing economy the kickstart it needs, and what effect are interest rates having on the property market? Joining me in the studio now is the CEO of Residex, John Edwards. How are you, John? Good evening. Good evening, everybody. Well, listen, John, I guess, you know, everyone is worried about, you know, the property market. You know, you've got these ridiculous claims of 20 and 40 per cent slumps in, in property prices. We can totally rule that one out, can't we? Yes, but I am very worried about Victoria. Okay. Um, when I look at the Victorian economy, and I'm doing an analysis of the Victorian economy and things now, yeah. I can't see anything in that economy that's actually going to do it, if I can say, any good. Mm. Um, it's definitely on the wrong side of the ledger. Mm. Um, its population is decreasing in terms of the rate of growth of immigration into the state. Mm. Um, the housing market is also now decreasing in value. Um, and with the currency at the current rate that it is, the one thing that it had going for it, which was manufacturing and exports, has been pulled from under it. Yeah. Um, and so it is the state that the Reserve Bank and everybody have got to think about. Mm. When you look back in history, it was always Victoria that led our nation into a recession, always. In every event that it occurs... Perhaps that's certainly where it certainly happened in the 90s, absolutely. after the Kane government. Um, yep. yep. It, it's always the state that leads us into trouble. And they had a massive rise in one year a few years back. That's, That's right. Like a 25% increase in one year. That's right. Yeah. You've now got an overhang of stock in Victoria, on my calculations, and yeah. probably therefore 70% of the stock in Melbourne, and it's the unit market, yeah. um, of something close to 20,000 dwellings, mm. which is enormous. It's the largest stock overhang yeah. of any capital city in Australia. How did that happen? Uh, it happened because you had a government that was interested in propping up an economy that was failing because of a failing manufacturing industry yeah. by, by increasing immigration. Mm. And it thought if it just brought people to the, to the state, yeah. um, then the problem would be solved, and it borrowed to do that. Mm. Um, in the process of actually doing that, um, what happened was the, the jobs that were there were housing because you had to house these people that came in. Yeah. Um, and always developers fail to recognise when the turning point is, and they've failed. And, in fact, when you look at the approvals and the construction activity that's going on in Melbourne, it still haven't, hasn't recognised um, the overhang in stock. Because we say nationally there's an undersupply of stock. That's right. Is that, is that a fair call? But Victoria... Is, has an oversupply for that state. Is that your argument? I, I'm, not, I'm, not as, I'm not as gung ho about there being uh, an undersupply right now. Yeah. I think that there is potentially a slight o undersupply, oversupply of stock nationally, mm. slight. Mm. Um, but we will have a shortage of stock coming into the future, and that's what people are talking about. They're talking about mm. not today, they're talking about tomorrow. Okay, let's talk about. Um, Let's imagine the Reserve Bank cuts in May, which we've been begging for about a year and a half at least, but they cut in May uh, and they cut again. Say if we get two... We, we get 50 basis points. 50 basis points over about three months. Can that help to turn around the property market? In, in many markets it will. Mm. Um, you've got... And, and I think we ought to focus on the positive as well as the negative. Of course. Uh, Melbourne is the, the bad market. But when you look it at the rest of Australia, anyway, uh, yes. absolutely yeah. it does. Yeah. Um, South Australia is equally a little bit in trouble, and I worry about the, the impact of BHP's shareholders deciding that they don't want a 40-year investment in, in the that Olympic da bad. Dam yeah. area. Yeah, right. But put that aside, and you've got um, Perth, and it is just going gangbusters. Mm. The, the pick-up in activity over there, and it's actually now got a shortage of stock, and a very clear shortage of stock stock. Mm. Um, and the population's increasing, jobs are increasing, uh, and it's the only state in Australia where you've had this quite dramatic increase in full-time job activity. Yeah. And New South Wales has clearly turned the corner. Um, it's tentative, however. Mm. It needs this interest rate reduction um, mm. to really push it forward. Queensland turned the corner as well and looks to me like as if it's about to do, do quite well. Mm. Um, and again, the interest rate is needed there. Mm. Uh, and so really the only state that really badly needs this interest rate reduction is the manufacturing state of Victoria. You do leave Tasmania out. Unemployment 7% in Tasmania. But 
In national terms, forgive me, it really doesn't make much difference, does it? <laughs> For people in Tasmania, <laughs> it does. Okay. Forgive me, everybody. I love Tasmania. In fact, it's a place where we all ought to retire. Okay. They probably hate you for saying that, but that has been a very good industry, the retirement and, and, industry. And the other thing is, why isn't it the Cambridge of Australia? I mean, Hobart offers an absolute ideal opportunity to be the University Research Centre of Australia. Yeah. It has all of the qualities, but it, it doesn't seem to happen. And, and it has a delightful outlook, Absolutely. doesn't it? Absolutely delightful outlook. What do you see in terms of um, investors? Are investors getting back into the market? Or are they very tentative? They definitely are. Um, there's quite clear indications that the investor market is improving and, mm. and improving in the markets. This is a fairly savvy population now. Mm. Um, the population now is far more researched than it ever was. You're not seeing the investors ploughing into Victoria, but you are seeing them come back into Queensland, New South Wales and Western Australia. Yeah. Uh, and they're staying away a little from uh, Darwin, but mm. they should be moving back shortly into Darwin. So, uh, no, uh, I think the investor activity is an educated, uh, positive move that we're seeing um, across the markets. OK, what about the, the trend in, in self-managed super funds, John? Because of the, the stock market um, you know, problems, uh, a lot of self-managed super fund people are starting to look at putting property. Yes. Is that also helping the, 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 the real estate market? Yes, it is. And where you're seeing this activity is in the unit market. And mm -hmm. if you were looking, if you looked at any graphs, and we're producing our quarterly reports currently, mm -hmm. um, you will see that the unit growth rate in most capital cities throughout Australia, and the actual turn to being moving in the trend terms up to the positive is actually in the unit market. And this is because of affordability, number one, and number two, because investor activity is predominantly in that market. Yeah, and, and, and a person who's buying a property inside a self-managed super fund always wants a, a property that has a really good yield. So, so what are the characteristics they should be looking for in, that, in those sorts of markets? Well, um, in Victoria, again, um, the difficulty is vacancy rates, and yeah. so properties aren't renting very well. No. Um, that tells us something about uh, where we ought to be. Yeah. Uh, and in all of the other capital cities, it's position. It is always position. It's close it's, to CBD. It's CBD. It's making sure that you're close to transport. transport. It's thinking about what, it, what the, the tenant and the young person needs who is actually stretched a little. Mm. And, and that means that you've got to all the time look at the costs and the, and the things and the facilities that are there that actually make their life comfortable. So it's, it's position, transport um, and amenity. OK. You made the point that Victoria has the, habit, has the history of actually dragging the rest of the economy down. So, so housing is a critical ingredient Absolutely. in economic growth. And do you think the Reserve Bank respects the importance of housing in underpinning growth in this country? I think the Reserve Bank does. I think this current government is failing. Mm. I honestly believe that the Reserve Bank charter is there, mm. but the, re the federal government ought to be saying to them, place less emphasis mm. on inflation in this point in time, but... Let's place emphasis on managing our currency. They actually, have a right. You actually have uh, printed out the charter. Yes. And it, it says stability of the currency, maintenance of full employment and economic prosperity and welfare of the people of Australia. And I don't think that anybody could say that that charter is being met currently, could they? No, I, I think this is, it's a, it's a one-handed affair, isn't Absolutely. it? Absolutely. Inflation focus. Absolutely. And so why doesn't the Reserve Bank get in there and manage our currency to stop the demise of our manufacturing industry? Mm. Yeah, well, I guess they would argue that it, 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 it smacks of, of protection. It does. Yeah. But um, if it's good enough for uh, uh, Switzerland to do... Mm -hmm. Why is it not good I enough for Australia? I think it's good enough for the USA as well. The greenback has been orchestrated. To it's good enough for China too, isn't it? I think when we're young and we're doing economics, they call it beggar thy neighbour. We are the neighbours being turned Absolutely. into beggars. All right, John, so one last thing. Victoria is your concern, but yes. if you look at national property prices, you're not worried about no, a massive 20% or 40% no. fall across the, across no, I'm the not. country. No, I'm not. And in fact, all of the markets are turning back up. Even um, Gold Coast? Is uh, it? No, the Gold Coast. I mean, yeah, yeah. the Gold Coast is it's still. Still, I'm still worried. Oh, yes. Yeah. Uh, Are that, pockets in the Gold Coast doing OK, but it's in no, general? just in general. Yeah. We, we've got difficulty on the Gold Coast. And, but, but Brisbane itself is Brisbane looking good. Brisbane is, is clearly showing a trend now um, out of its correction phase. Yeah. And what about Sunshine Coast? 
it'll fall into a little bit the category of the Gold, Gold Coast. Coast yeah. yes. so, so Brisbane is the jewel in that, Absolutely. In that south-east yeah. Queensland And then crown. as you move up the coast, it's all starting to do fine. Okay, John, if people want to look at all the stuff you do, because you are, like I had John McGrath last night, and John's one of the best real estate in the country, and you are one of the best researchers on real estate. Your website? Go to residex.com.au, and I advise people strongly to get our weekly or our monthly newsletter and at the same time have a really good look at our quarterly reports that we produce. Excellent, mate. Thanks for joining us on the program. It's time now to check in with our favourite public defender, and tonight he's looking at the pitfalls of eBay. Joining me from our Sydney studio is Consumer 